Oh people YouTube right here the Malik Aaron Aaron I'm terribly sorry this is so late. I wanted to film this on Sunday but I couldn't do that because I do other things. So I'm doing it very late on Tuesday. And before I get to the review, which is this, I got some things from the mail from Amazon. You know who they are. I got a couple movies here that are really good. You could tell that you got them, I could tell that one of these will certainly not be like the other. And so I'm gonna start off with the one that's not like the others, and that is a movie I wanted to get for a while. South Park. Bigger, longer, and uncut. One of my favorite animated movies of all time. Uh the reason why I wanted it so bad is because I mean, I've watched this so many times, and it's just so hilarious, and has such great songs, especially with the Blame Canada song, that was fantastic. Uh, yeah, this movie is just great. This is one of the rare examples of, like, TV going to a movie, like, trans how do I say, transitioning from a TV show to a movie, and done, they done it, six and did it correctly. The right way. Because most of the time. Like they change it. They want to go to live action. And ends up we get a bunch of crap. But they cha they kept the style. They kept everything. Similar to what Simpsons did. What Spongebob did. That's the right way to do it. Alright. And this is a perfect example of that. I can't wait to review this in the future. Next. Next three are going to be. Oscar movies. I realized I needed more prestige movies in my collection because I mean, my collection is pretty good. It has a nice mix of everything, but the one area that's lacking is prestige movies. I mean, I have a couple. I have a uh, Crash, the movie that infamously stole uh, Best Picture. Um, Look for any more. Pursuit of Happiness is another one. Recommend for a Dream is another one. The Shawshank Redemption is a great one. Oh, uh, there's Malcolm X, uh, La La Land, Gravity, Gladiator, Django Unchained, Captain Mr. Fox. I guess you can consider that. The Room. You can't forget that. Uh,. Blade Runner, yeah, a lot of good stuff. American History X, yeah, a lot of good stuff in here. But these next three are very different in terms of what they are. First, it's Whiplash, the movie that won J.K. Simmons' Oscar. This movie, you think it's gonna be all you know, nice, you know, and heartwarming about, you know, like, this kid wants to be a drummer, and he's gonna prove them all wrong. No. Do not go, if you're watching this movie, do not expect a nice, you know, uplifting movie. Don't expect that. This is dark. It gets into some dark territory in this movie. Especially, it's someone like Black Swan. Black Swan is a great companion piece with this. Considering that both characters, they want to be like the best. Or like they want to, you know, have perfection. And then it ultimately... Well, Black Swan ultimately destroyed Natalie Portman, Natalie Portman, but in this, Miles Teller barely avoided that true self-destruction, but he was pretty close. So yeah, phenomenal movie right here. Next up, Wes Anderson. I know I realize I feel terrible that I don't have a whole lot of Wes Anderson movies. I have Fantastic Mr. Fox, but that's basically it. So that's how you get another one, because why not? That's Moonrise Kingdom. So it is perfect. It, well, I guess, I think this is the first uh, Wes Anderson movie to really get that uh, real mainstream attention. It has a style and everything. It's just very quirky, very strange, weird. Has a lot of, you know... Interesting characters, locations, yeah. And yeah, this is just... 
I mean, it's different, very different, very average, very different from your average movie, and I think that's why Wes Anderson is probably the most high-profile indie director of all time. I might get the Grand Budapest Hotel, his biggest hit. Maybe I'm not sure when. Hopefully, not too long. Finally, Michael Keaton's wall should have been his comeback, but then his Oscar was taken by uh, Eddie Redmayne. Birdman. How did he not win an Oscar? That's, that's a crime right there. One best picture. And the guy who made this ended up making The Revenant, which, you know, won Leo his first Oscar. So that's nice. Yeah, it's kind of ironic to see Michael Keaton in a movie like this, considering he was Batman. He was a superhero, but this is more, more or less uh, a washed-up actor who was once a superhero and wants to re you know revive his career in a way, you know. And uh, yeah, that's, pretty, well, that's a basic way of putting it—a real basic way of putting it. So yeah. Can't wait to review this. So those are all my new movies I got from Amazon. Now the real review. Tron Legacy. This is the sequel to the 1982 Tron, which, although it was not a big hit money-wise, it got a huge audience, or like a cult following after its release. And that cult following ended up bringing this movie because Disney because the thing about this is that in 2008 at Comic Con Disney like they had like a little thing where it said like Tron 2 and it showed well that they were like legit serious they're just like we want to make a sequel and then they made the sequel they brought by Jeff Bridges my man and what's better than one Jeff Bridges? Two Jeff Bridges. Got old Jeff Bridges and young Jeff Bridges. And and people complain like about today about like CGI de aging. Well, this movie did it long before current movies. Like I think Rogue One was like the biggest victim of that, the CGIing of actors. And yeah, this movie did it way before. So yeah, and everyone was real. A lot I, I know for a fact a lot of people were really hyped about this movie mainly because, one, it was a sequel to Tron, two, it looked visually amazing, from the trailers, and three, it was coming out. This movie came out a year after Avatar, and it was in like the same weekend basically. So everyone was had somewhat. A little too high expectations and we thought it was gonna be like the next avatar which makes sense they both like big budget cgi movies in the middle of december but that didn't happen i mean it still made money but it was nowhere near avatar money so yeah and they were going to do a third movie but then that got canceled because of tomorrowland failing so yeah now I'm going to read you this big old paragraph because everyone just loves reading. Yeah, right. Um, so Disney presents a high-tech motion picture unlike anything you've ever seen. I don't know about that. Immerse yourself in the digital world of Tron. A celebrated actor Jeff Bridges stars in a revolutionary visual effects adventure beyond imagination. I wouldn't call this revolutionary. It looks phenomenal visually and everything, but I wouldn't call it revolutionary. So when uh, Flynn, uh, the world's greatest video game creator, sends out a se secret signal to an amazing digital realm, his son discovers the clue and embarks on a personal journey to save his long-lost father. With the help of the fearless female warrior, Quora, father and son venture through an incredible cyber universe and wage the ultimate battle of good versus evil. Bring home the unrivaled mm -hmm. entertainment experience of Tron Legacy, complete with never before seen bonus features that take you even deeper into the phenomenal world of 
try. So yeah, after the first Tron, Jeff Bridges, he decides to basically leave this world, the real world, and uh, go to make his old digital realm. Then the company he was running, it was going down. Um, his son, his son's mother, died. So the son was basically by himself. What the son does, see, they, you think, well, going back, in comparison with WWE, because, you know, we found that a lot on this show. So, like, with Vince McMahon, everyone thought Shane McMahon, his son, would be the next in line, because Linda, his mother, stepped down as COO, and everyone thought Shane was going to do it, but Vince named himself COO, and then Shane left the company for seven years. It's not quite like that. But they expected, you know, his son to, you know, be next in line, but he doesn't want to do that. Say so he wants to pull pranks on the people. And he goes to jail, but he gets bailed out immediately because he has all that, all his father's money. has all that money on him. And just, he's just a troublemaker. And then this dude is just like, you know, go to the arcade. I mean, you could uh, find your dad, maybe. I don't know. So he goes to this arcade, got his old school machine. And then, because he is a signal, he is sent into it. And then he just kind of like goes into it. And then he's just in this big old black digital world. And then they think like he's a program, but he's not. And then he has to fight. And like, uh, battles. With like these disc, with some, uh, disc things. I'm not sure what they are, but they look like frisbees. So, like, he has to go through battle. Kind of reminds me of TMNT, the 2003 series with the Battle Nexus. In a way. It reminds me of that. Reminds me of a lot of things. They do this a lot, but... They find out, oh, snap, he's not a program. Then they find out, he's Michael Flynn's son! And then, Jeff... There's, like, young Jeff Bridges, and then... Well, the main character's name is Sam. He's just like, you're not my dad. And then he meets Quora, who has to be a strong female companion because movie. And she brings it over to old Jeff Bridges, the real Michael Flynn. Reunites, they talk, more stuff happens. Honestly, I'm going to be brutally honest. I didn't pay that much attention to this movie because the plot... It's not interesting. It really isn't. It's very forgettable and just ugh. Just bland, boring. It's just honestly not good. I mean, you think they would come up with a better plot for this type of movie than, you know, if they want this franchise to be in the mainstream, they should have came up with a better plot. Uh. So, um. I guess, what are we talking about first? Let's talk about the good. Visuals. 15 out of 10, 20 out of 10, infinity out of 10, I don't care. Visuals. How did this not, how this did not win Oscar? I mean, it was going up against tough competition like Inception and whatnot, but this should have, this should have at least won something because I mean, the visuals are breathtaking, honestly. It's a shame I didn't watch this on, like, a big old screen, like an IMAX 3D screen. That would have been amazing to witness. Um, because, like, just seeing, like, all these, uh, the blue lights, yellow lights everywhere. Just this, it looks amazing. It's a sight to behold, honestly. If you're gonna see this movie, you... Um, I guarantee you, like, the effects are the real high point. Well, one of the high points. Yeah, because the colors, you just... I can't describe it enough. It's hard to describe it, honestly, because you have to watch this for yourself in order to really experience it. What's next? Music. Soundtrack. It was done by uh, Daft Punk. 
who are known for their um, electronic music and whatnot. They bring it here, and it sounds great. Some, and I, uh, the one thing a movie needs is a good soundtrack. That way, people might get invested. Something Justice League did not have. Sorry to talk about Justice League, but... That movie makes me... The more I think about it, the more the matter I get. But, yeah, the soundtrack is great. So those are the high points. Everything else, ugh, just not great at all. Acting, I mean, Jeff Bridges and young Jeff Bridges, they do a decent enough job. Uh, Michael Sheen is in this, and he honestly reminded me of Jared Leto's Joker in a weird way, in a couple of ways. Maybe, maybe Jared Leto got his inspiration for Joker from this movie, perhaps, because they act pretty similar in my eyes. But yeah, I mean, he was great. That's like this flamboyant uh, character. Like he, too, like, he was somewhat similar to David Bowie, rest in peace. So, yeah, a lot of people drew comparisons to that. I mean, he was just, he was great. He was like one of the only actor that was actually having a lot of fun in this role. Everyone else was just, ugh. The main character is not engaging. This is female companions not not engaging either. You don't really care. I mean, when one of them gets hurt, I mean, Cora, I believe, uh, gets injured, or she gets near death. I'm just like, Ugh, whatever. Yeah, it's just one of the things that uh, she wants is that she wants to see the sunlight. Because that world, that Tron world, as pretty as it is, is darkness. No sun, no nothing. There's a bunch of... Ugh. Just a bunch of darkness around them. So at the end of the movie, as you would expect, she, I guess she goes into the real world. Real world? I guess. And then she sees the sunset. And she's like, wow, it's so pretty. And I was like, and roll credits. I'm like, wow. One ending. So, Tron Legacy. Great effects. Great music. Lackluster acting. Engaging plot. So, it's a very mixed bag. So, I'm going to give it 5 out of 10. Which is pretty basically what it got overall. Last I, I mean, the Rotten Tomato score was like 51. So, that's about right. My well, is 5 out of 10. If they would have, if the acting, if they got better actors for the these roles and had a better storyline, it would have been higher. But because those weren't great, then they just kind of, the whole movie just, it brings the whole movie down. And that's a shame, but it's true. So 5 out of 10, pretty disappointing, especially considering that the visuals and music are so good. But the acting and storyline are so bland, you know? So yeah, that's a shame. Yeah, I wouldn't highly recommend it to really anybody. So the next review, I'm gonna check that real quick. Go ahead over here. Oh, cool. Finally, something I really want to review. It's a classic. I don't care what anybody says. It's a classic in my eyes. And that is the 1996 masterpiece known as Space Jam. The greatest basketball movie of all time. And the ultimate, um, I guess you could say, crossover of all time with Michael Jordan and the Looney Tunes. And that's the great, it has a fantastic soundtrack too. So yeah, it's next time to Space Jam. And so make sure to subscribe, like this video, leave a comment. I will see you all next time. And I am out of here. And...